All right, folks, I want to go over this project that I've been working on for the last two days. Uh, this is a prototype of an automotive gauge that will be going into my Jeep. Um, the plan is to build a couple of these um, and use them as in my instrumentation panel. Uh, but I'll go over really quickly what's here. Uh, first of all, there's a organic LED display from Lady Ada, um, or Adafruit.com, rather. Um, it's uh, 128 uh, by 64, I believe, for resolution. It's SPI as well as uh, I2C. Uh, over here is an Arduino Nano clone. I just picked this up at a local store. They didn't have the actual Arduinos, but these are cheaper and pretty much the same thing. Uh, over here I have six, poten uh, six potentiometers. They're all different values, but it doesn't really matter which values they are. Uh, they're just wired into the ADC. Um, pins down here on the uh, Arduino Nano. And up here is a Neo Pixel Ring from um, Adafruit.com as well. And there's 16 RGB LEDs that are individually addressable. So I'll go ahead and uh, turn this on and show you what uh, this thing's capable of. I'm just going to plug it into my USB here. So when it comes up, you can see there's a single LED that's turned on right now. Pretty boring, but uh, unfortunately the lighting in here is not going to allow me to show the full uh, uh, color quality that's that's here because this camera is easily saturated. Uh, I'll, I can turn the light off a little bit later just to show it, but uh, down here on the display panel you can see these six uh, parameters that are of interest. Um, there's width in the upper left, decay, rate, level, hue, and chroma. Um, the width value is controlled by the first potentiometer, and all this really does is controls the um, the width of the pulse. Now this value goes from 0 to 256. It's right around 256 right now. And since there are 16 LEDs in this ring, when it's at half, such as this, it's uh, uh, like around 128, half the pixels are lit. Likewise, when it's at 64, four of the pixels will be lit. Um, yeah, there's 64. And then if it's down to uh, anything like around 16 or so, um, or I'm sorry, anything around 8 or so, you're going to have a single pixel lit. So I can set it up around, around 3 or so and demonstrate the next pot. The next pot controls, uh, as I'll show you here, this controls the decay which is the number in the upper the upper right there. Uh, this controls, uh, this is all done off of an inverse square law, so um, this controls how quickly um, it tapers off on the end. So as I ro rotate this up, you can see that there's a little bit of a, um, a fade out effect around here as well. And that does scale along with the, the width. So if I increase the width here, the tail will follow it on both sides, so it makes a nice fade out effect. Um, the next pot over, um, over here, the third one over, I have set to control the hue, which is on the third line here. So this will just set the overall color, and you can pretty much go to any color in the rainbow. You can change your own color mapping, or change the color mappings as well. Uh, if there's certain colors you want, you can also do white, and non-spectral colors, but um, um, that's not how I have it set up right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to like a nice cyan color. Actually, I'm gonna set it to orange. I think it might show up a little bit better on the camera for later. All right, the next pot over controls what I call the chroma value here. It's the bottom one, it's a, it's a float value. What this does is it controls the color change in the, in the uh, fade out effect. So if I go negative towards red, I'll see that it goes uh, from uh, yellow to red. Again, this room's kind of bad for that. I'm going to try to get on top here and see if I can see the effect. I may even have to turn the lights off here real quick. Yeah, that's a little bit better. This, this camera really does not do this display any justice. So I'll go ahead and turn the lights back on so I can see what I'm doing here. Just turn on one set of lights, I guess. That might be good. Yeah, and probably try turning the brightness down. Nope. So, again, same pot. 
if I swing it the other direction, it fades from yellow towards the blue end of the spectrum, and then into purple, and then eventually wraps back around the red. And I might need to make the tail a little bit longer here. Make this look a little bit better. There we go. And change it so it's not r r running around so fast. There we go. So now it goes from yellow towards the green into the blue and purple range. And then if I go the other direction, it should fade into the red and then back around the purple again. Alright, the last pot that's over here controls the rate. And the rate will just allow uh, you to set the the rate at which it's spinning around. It can go either direction. And some of the interesting things are when you go up to a certain level you start to get weird visual effects where it looks like there's two copies mirrored from one another. Sometimes you get three, four, or five um, uh, level sim or uh, symmetry in there and it looks pretty interesting so I had a lot of fun just playing around with it. The last pot here controls brightness and for anyone that has reservations about buying one of these because they don't know if they're going to be visible during daylight um, these things are ridiculously bright. When you crank these up all the way such as I'm doing right now these things are easily capable of lighting an entire room and I don't think I'm going to have any problem seeing these in my Jeep when I'm uh, driving down the road during the daylight. I, I, I plan on having these on a light sensor so that they will scale the, uh, the uh, light to the ambient conditions so that I'm not blinding myself at nighttime. Uh, but yeah, these things are plenty bright and I do apologize because you can obviously see my camera lens is a little bit dusty here as well. Um, but you can see that it's, it's lighting up my entire room here, casting shadows and the whole bit. So yeah, these things are uh, are definitely great. They're a lot of fun to play with. And these OLED displays are equally good for contrast. I'm not sure how they will uh, fare during the daylight, but I plan on uh, taking it out tomorrow and uh, finding out. So um, I will, thanks for watching, and I will put the source code for this project up on uh, the comment section. I'll put it up in GitHub or something, because uh, if you build this into a box with some... Uh, some knobs attached to these potentiometers, you could have a pretty interesting little uh, light display toy you can play with or even uh, set it up with an audio sensor and uh, or a microphone rather and have it synchronized to music. There's a lot of stuff you can do but um, I'll put the code up there so other people can play with it and mangle it and do whatever they want. Alright, well, thanks for watching.